Marcus Burton, who is a freshman from just outside South Bend at Mishawaka, Indiana. Jeff Pond, the one of the umpires with Anthony Eats. Doug Shouse, the referee, and Notre Dame's got the ball first here. The Irish have lost four of their last five, including a difficult overtime loss to Georgetown here in South Bend on Saturday afternoon, 72-68. Citadel has not played since last Thursday night. They lost at the College of Charleston by 15 points. And Ed Conroy's return to Charleston. They're headed to their holiday break after the game tonight. There's a drive and score for Tay Davis to get Notre Dame on the board. And a quick look at the Bulldog lineup. Madison Durr is a sophomore to keep an eye on, a 6'4 guard, and a Notre Dame transfer. An interesting story tonight for a game with Elijah Morgan's return to South Bend. And that's Morgan handling the ball for the Bulldogs. This is Winston Hill, another grad transfer. Ed Conroy starts three of them in this lineup. And on call, there's Delora Brown to put the Bulldogs on the board. Citadel is a team, Wes, that really looks to push the ball inside, much more so than Notre Dame. Excellent pass that time by Winston Hill. Davis, here is Burton, a young freshman. Foul line jumper. And slapped out by Keva Jai, and Notre Dame's got a fresh 20. Man to man. Konezny trying to get to the basket. Can't Jai the recovery, and he's fouled on the play. So Kevin Jai going to get a couple of free throws here. And it's on Winston Hill. It'll be his first, and it's number one on the Bulldogs of the Citadel. And Kevin Jai played at Penn State a year ago. As you get a look at Ed Conroy, who has returned to Charleston as the Citadel head coach. He was there. From 06 to 10, and has come back now as Jai misses the first free throw. Conroy played for Les Robinson at the Citadel. He's had an interesting coaching journey in the late 80s, of course. And Les Robinson, of course, is a familiar figure in the ACC at NC State in the 90s. And Jai hit the back end, so it's an early 3-2 lead for the Irish. Notre Dame starts in the man-to-man -man as well, and they've been really good defensively this year. Number five in the ACC in points allowed. And then Elijah Morgan had the ball and a whistle off the ball. Going to be on Konezny. J.R. Konezny, his first and the first against Micah Shrewsbury, who, Dan, you see where he is building his butter or building his team at least early here is what he's going to do defensively. Well, they had they basically as we said they returned no offense so they've got young players and you got to start somewhere and if you can guard people then that'll keep you in every game then you just got to punch in a couple of baskets AJ Smith handling the ball five to shoot for the Bulldogs here's Morgan into traffic with two one Smith has to launch and it is off the mark and a shot clock violation and that's a win for Shrewsbury's team and that's exactly what he wants to see you know, they did, he did a really nice job building at Penn State. And at Penn State, you know, his teams emphasize shooting the three and running up and down, and not quite so much here. They have to have a much stronger defensive focus. Into the corner, there's Coach Shrewsbury's son, Brayton, touching it. He's in the lineup tonight because Julian Roper is sidelined with uh, some foot soreness here for tonight's contest against the Citadel. Burton. And here is Braden Shrewsbury trying to get through on the baseline. Off balance shot, another shot clock violation. We've had one in each of the last possessions by the respective <laughs> school. That's a look at Logan Imes, who's not going to play tonight either, along with Roper. They're both out of the lineup. Imes has got a bit of a shoulder injury they're keeping an eye on. Boy, of course, Roper is a, a grad transfer, a junior transfer from Northwestern. Without those two guys, Notre Dame becomes very, very thin. And a ball away basket for A.J. Smith. Leading score for the Citadel at almost 17 a game is the 6'4 sophomore who puts them in front for the first time. 
Uh, Smith is a big physical guard who can really score. He's going to be a very difficult matchup. And Burton went to the floor on the dribble, got, got held up by a double team, and alternating possession is going to send this to the Citadel. And Burton has been a little bit turnover prone early in his college career, and that's not a great surprise. This is a guy who in high school pretty much could do whatever he wanted to do, and he's still learning how to play at this level. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Irish. Here's White, or Smith rather, on the drive, and he will feed Melora Brown. And Quentin Melora Brown's got a couple of quick baskets, and the Citadels doubled the number on Notre Dame here in the first three and a half minutes. And down goes A.J. Smith. And we're going to have an injury timeout here. Wes, I did not see what happened. He could have gotten tangled up with Shrewsbury in the lane there, but boy, he went down and you can hear him. He's in some pain. And the teams are going to go their respective benches and we're going to take a break. They're going to tend to A.J. Smith. Citadel with an early three-point lead in South Bend. With Duracell. Holiday Matt. ACC basketball is brought to you by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. And a look at the career of Elijah Morgan, who finished up here at Notre Dame and now has transferred to play the extra year for the Citadel. And he's in the lineup tonight, the grad transfer who had 28 career games in South Bend as a walk-on. Interesting story we found out, the association with Morgan and Notre Dame is one thing, but Ed Conroy kind of started the whole process for Elijah Morgan's post-prep basketball career. There's a block by Melora Brown on the three-point offer by 6'10", Terry Booth, who's coming to the ball game during the timeout. Citadel switches to a zone defense, a 1-2-2 two, two zone, and we talked about Melora Brown. He does an awful lot of things down on the interior for the Bulldogs. And a foul called on the drive. And it looks like Tay Davis will keep the possession going for Notre Dame. The foul is on Durr, Madison Durr, sophomore from Atlanta, his first. That's the second on the Bulldogs, who lead by three here. Four minutes in. Who switch, switch back to man-to-man. -man. And there's Marcus Burton in traffic, and it just bounced out. Melora Brown clears, and here's the Citadel on the run with Durr. Skip pass across the floor, and now Melora Brown tried to feed the cutter. That's Keenan Davis in traffic, forced it up, and the rebound pulled away, and that's Kerry Booth. Finesne. This match out front. Laura Brown trying to stop Burton. And he did. Yep. And Finesne with baseline, lost the handle on it. And another held ball, Dan, our second almost five minutes of play will go to Notre Dame here. West, just before we went to break, A.J. Smith, the leading scorer for the Citadel, sticks that left arm out to try to slow down Brandon Shrewsbury as he goes back door. And he already had a some tape on that left shoulder. They took him back in the back, and they were working on that left shoulder, and he's now out on the bench again. You can see he's got more tape on that left shoulder. We'll see if he's able to come back. Three ball, Kinesny good. 11th triple of the year for the redshirt sophomore from South Bend. We're tied at six now on J.R. Konezny's first basket of the ball game. Melora Brown for the call, working on Keva Jai. Burton trying to help. They feed the lane, that got blocked. On the drive and shot by Durr. Good help defense by Notre Dame here, Dan. Yeah, really, Wes, but you got to be careful when you double-team Brown because he is a pass-first guy. He is looking to pass the ball. That time, though, the rotation was really good. He tried to pass it, and they knocked it out of bounds. 
Davis had put it in play. Durr, Winston Hill for three. Pernesny kept it alive for Tay Davis. And ahead, Booth had it knocked away from behind by Morgan. Turned over by the Irish. That'll be Notre Dame's third turnover and a backcourt foul. On the freshman at 6'10", Kerry Booth from outside of Denver at Inglewood, Colorado. It's the second on Notre Dame in this first half. All Morgan did was look behind him and see Booth coming up and stop, and Booth ran right up his back. That's the wily old veteran catching the freshman. Six all, and Notre Dame has turned it over three times already here. Morgan lost the handle on it. And Sona, who's come into the ball game, goes to the deck against Melora Brown. And another hell ball. Our Wes, third, if we like the five trips down the floor, Dan. Wes, if this was the old days, we'd be having <laughs> jump balls all the time. Yeah, exactly right. Third we've had here early. on the inbounds, Morgan to three, good. Right in front of the Notre Dame bench for Elijah Morgan, his 28th of the year. Coming off 16 at College of Charleston last Thursday night. Three-point lead again for the Bulldogs. And he's one of the better percentage three-point shooters as well, Webb. They'll get him as many of those as they can. In traffic, here's Zona. Can't finish, they battle inside. Matt will run it down in the corner. Burton a standing three. Got it. Marcus Burton. Just his ninth three of the year, Dan. Uh, he comes in shooting 20% from out there, and that's a funny looking little shot, but watching him on tape, when he gets that much time and room, he's not bad from out there. On the drive, Madison Durr pushes the Bulldogs back in front. And Durr is a guy who likes to take the ball to the basket. And he's not a great three-point shooter. Notre Dame needs to work hard to keep him in front, not let him into the lane. Burton. On the attack, tried to bounce it down to Zona, taking away Melora Brown. Another Notre Dame turnover be their fourth. Melora Brown cutting through scores. He's got a half dozen. That's just that Notre Dame defense wasn't ready. And Melora Brown just goes straight to the goal. Here's Burton. Pernesny a hanger in the lane. And the rebound pulled away. And that's Cam Roberts, a 6'6 freshman who's come in, wearing number five for the Bulldogs. Davis is three, bounds away. Davis is only a 25% three-point shooter. Don't know that that's the one you wanted in that situation. Zona had a three rim out. Three uh, subs we said, the table for the Citadel and one for Notre Dame, Dan. Back and forth we go. Yeah, Notre Dame's problem at West is they just have had a tough time scoring this year. Irish only have three field goals in the first eight minutes of the ball game, and that's going to get us to a timeout. Four-point lead for the Citadel. First half action from South Bend continues. Ed Conroy trying to join a list of Southern Conference schools to pull upsets on the road at Power 5 venues on this season alone, Dan. Chattanooga beat Louisville, obviously. Western Carolina beat Notre Dame. UNCG got Arkansas at Bud Walton. That might be the marquee of the three so far for the SOCON. Uh, SOCON's a good, good league. And, you know, Chattanooga and UNCG in particular, they will contend for the title in the SOCON. And there is A.J. Smith. Seems like he's okay. Easy for me to say from here. But, you know, he's, I, we said, he's their leading scorer. He's a very dynamic player. Really good for the Citadel to have him back. Yep, Davis on the drive, and we'll get a whistle and a foul. 
And of course, Smith returning, he's their leading scorer, sixth best in the Southern Conference. Coming into tonight at almost 17 a game, and you see the three point numbers in particular, but there's only 14 makes in 11 ball games. So it's not a volume as much as it is just quality for Smith. Backdoor cut and blocked out of there, Konezny on the layup attempt of Cam Roberts. Quickly inside the catch and score for Keva Jai. He's got three. That's just his seventh field goal of the year, Dan. Well, Keva Jai and Matt Zona are not really integral parts of the offense, but if Jai will run the court like that, they can find him in transition. They don't run any plays for him. He's got to make his own opportunities. Long three out front, bounds away. Shrewsbury runs it down. And the Irish trying to pick it up in transition. Here's a lead, Jai again. They whip it around the perimeter and Konezny down the lane, drew the contact, missed the shot. Jai the rebound and that rattles out. Konezny a third try. Is there a fourth of the Irish? It got pulled out of there and finally Konezny dribbles out for a new shot clock. Burton thought about the three. Notre Dame's got seven offensive rebounds. Burton now with four to shoot. Here's Konezny all the way down the lane. He'll draw the foul. Like the second, third, and fourth efforts on behalf of Notre Dame <laughs> on that drive. <laughs> Konezny does a really nice job coming over at six feet seven. He's more athletic than you think. And this is Jai just running the court. We said they don't really look for him inside, but if he's going to run and he's going to be ahead of the pack, then Burton's smart enough to get him the ball. Cam Roberts the foul. Here's J.R. Konezny, who's 88% at the line. And the free throw is good. He's now got four. Don't forget, we got a Friday night. Vince doubleheader starts at 6 o'clock Eastern from Little John Coliseum. P.J. Hall and the Tigers hosting Queens out of the A-Sun at 6 o'clock Eastern. And then... Notre Dame welcomes Marist here to Purcell Pavilion at the Joyce Center. Solid doubleheader for you Friday night on ACC Network and always available on the ESPN app. A couple of free throws for Konezny give him five. Notre Dame makes a substitution off the conversion. And you see Tay Davis back on the floor. Also, Kerry Booth has returned for Coach Shrewsbury's club. And Smith on the drive, and the rebound pulled away by Booth. That's what Notre Dame wants to get. They want to force the Citadel into contested two-point shots. Booth a three. How about Kerry Booth's 12th three of the year and his first points tonight? Seven straight by the Irish. In the last 90 seconds, they've gone from four down to three up in South Bend halfway through the first. Hey, it's me, your skin. Some cleansers get us clean, but take my moisture. I'm craving a balanced clean with CeraVe. CeraVe cleansers developed with dermatologists help me maintain my moisture balance. With hyaluronic acid known to attract moisture, plus three essential ceramides to help restore my natural barrier. With CeraVe, cleansing can be about giving, not just taking. So we can be a healthy feeling clean. CeraVe Clean. CeraVe cleansers from the number one dermatologist recommended skincare brand. Well, with Dan Bonner, West Durham, and Notre Dame on a 7-0 run. Nice play here from Burton back to Booth, Dan. Well, and the thing is, Notre Dame isn't really looking to throw the ball inside. And what happened for the Citadel is Winston Hill went down inside to cover, and that allowed Booth to drift outside. And Booth, he's a tall guy, West, but over 60% of his field goal attempts are threes. That's what he wants to do. He wants to step out and shoot the three. You know, the interesting part here, um, Notre Dame's done this, Dan, hitting just five field goals in 18 tries. And they've made this 7-0 run while the Citadel hits their first field goal in their last five on the dunk by Melora Brown, who leads everybody with eight here in the first half. It was a good response by Notre Dame. They went more than four minutes without a field goal. 
had a really good response, knocking down the three, and it really started with, what did they get, like six offensive rebounds in one yeah. possession. That seemed to energize them. <laughs> Here's Braden Shrewsbury, young freshman, son of the coach, who's been quiet so far. Left that on the front rim. And here are the Bulldogs to within one. Shrewsbury's looking to shoot the three. So right at this point in his development, you got to run him off that three-point line, and the Citadel did. Bounce pass back on the perimeter. This is Winston Hill, Durr, and now A.J. Smith, who is completely recovered from a little shoulder bump in the opening couple of minutes of our ball game tonight. Melora Brown with three to shoot, a triple away, and good. Wow. Quentin Melora Brown now with 11, just his third three of the year. Now he's got the reputation, Wes, that he can shoot it from out there, and you're right. It's only his ninth attempt of the year. But he five had a lot of time and a lot of space. Yep, five straight double dips now for Melora Brown with 10 or more. Booth to Burton. Davis trying to get all the way to the basket, and he's going to draw the foul. So five straight from Melora Brown has pushed the Bulldogs back in front. Dan, here's the first of the foul. Well, he's a guy that's looking to pass the ball, Wes, but he's done a nice job rolling into the lane and finding the open spot. And then when you get off of him, and that's what, you know, Jai just plays a little bit too far away, gives him too much time. And I think I'm okay with that. You know, he's not a great three-point shooter. Foul was on Hill a moment ago, his second. Here's Shrewsbury's three. And the long rebound for Durr. Sophomore from Atlanta runs it in the front court. And the travel is called by Doug Shaw. So the Bulldogs turn it over for just the second time in this first half. And the Citadel operating with a two-point lead here. Thought about an entry pass for Jai, who resets to the other side against Melora Brown. An offensive foul call, Dan, on Kevin Jai here, his first. Now, I request Notre Dame has gone more to Jai in the low post for your traditional back to the basket. Uh, they've gone more to him in that situation than I've seen in most of their games. And, you know, it's just a situation where nobody's coming to double team, and he just lowers that shoulder. Five turnovers, now five field goals. And for the Irish, I've got them with three team fouls, or four, beg your pardon. There's one on Burton, one on Konezny, Jai, and Booth. So four turn. Okay, so they're going to step aside here. we got a little bit of game management to tend to. Two-point lead for the center. finds themselves down two and you see a moment ago the clock just stops there you go shot clock as well we played all the way through they were able to kind of do the math on this remember they didn't realize it until the giant foul had been committed right there so they, they worked went through over the stopwatches yep they went over and did they went over game. west they looked at the replay they counted the mississippis and they decided that it was 754. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure the schoolyard approach was the exact science that went into play here. <laughs> now, Wes, when it the did. clock runs that long, I'm not sure there is an exact sign. No, I think you're right. Here's a driving score by Madison Durr. Oh, a crafty sophomore guard who was all freshman a year ago in the Southern Conference. Averaged seven points, three rebounds, two assists. Played with a, and there's Konezny again. Getting the field goal and the foul. J.R. Konezny, who redshirted a year ago and what ended up being Mike Bray's final season, has come back with a little bit of vengeance and attack. The interesting the basket, thing about Konezny, Wes, he drives the ball to the basket. And last year, Cam Roberts, who's underneath the basket, would have tried to take a charge. But with the rule change this year, Roberts goes for the block shot, and the result is a foul. And five fouls on the Citadel. And the first on A.J. Smith. Konezny now 
has got eight in the ball game. He's three for three from the line. The Irish to within one as Durr operates the offense for Coach Conroy. And three seconds to call from Jeff Pond off the baseline. Uh, was it three seconds, or did they say Durr ran out of bounds and came back in and got that the ball? That might have been it, yeah. Here is Davis on the drive. Strong take, couldn't finish. Tate got his own rebound, but he's surrounded at the baseline. Burton a standing three. And tapped around, and finally Melora Brown for the Bulldogs. A lot of work for not on the part of Notre Dame on the offensive boards. Here is Morgan. Back out front, and A.J. Smith to work. Skip out. Roberts trying to get baseline. Nicely done by Shrewsbury. Four to shoot. Elijah Morgan launches and oh, hits. Pair of threes for Morgan. Lead is four for the Bulldogs. Scoop and score, Kinesley. And we have seen Kinesley do that at least three times, Wes. Yep, he's got double figures, Dan. Four times in the last six games for J.R. Kinesley. But the Irish to within just two after the Morgan triple. Now Melora Brown. And the rebound for Burke. Relatively quiet first half scoring wise for Marcus Burton, who will go to the basket and score. Five and for Burton. He averages almost 16 a game. The long miss on the three sometimes is like a turnover. You get the rebound, you get down the court. It's a good transition opportunity, and Burton takes it all the way to the basket. Morgan backs out into the corner. He'll fire again and hit. Boy, he's Nine. talking to the Notre Dame bench, Wes. Ooh, sure is. Central back by three on Elijah Morgan's second three. Of three in this first half. He's got nine, 11 for Melora Brown. That's 20 of their 26, and Davis left the layup short. And here's Durr with the Bulldogs. That'll be feeling pretty good. They've hit five of their last six on the floor. Smith, Morgan tees up another one. And Konezny the rebound. Notre Dame has struggled to score, West, but they've done a nice job keeping the Citadel out of the lane on defense. Konezny tried to slip baseline. Fall away is good. Nice first half for J.R. Konezny, Dan. And he's done it basically, Wes, off the dribble. He's beaten people off the dribble, gone all the way to the basket that time with a little pull-up jump shot. Got a dozen, the Irish to within one, under four we go in this first half. Melora Brown. Shrewsbury tried to help momentarily with a double, out front again, a three. And now the Irish can take the lead and Burton in charge. Davis, Tay Davis rounding into the lane and reverses up and it fell off the rim. Can't argue the look, Dan. No, but he's missed a couple of those, Wes. If he's going to get it in there at six feet nine, he's really got to convert. And now with 3.08 to play, here is Durr. Trying to sneak into traffic. That ball got deflected, I think, from Davis. Jai is also in traffic, now turned over, and here's Konezny down the lane, scores and draws the foul. Terrific transition bucket for Konezny and the Irish. What a half JR Konezny's got. 
really lifting Notre Dame. That time off the miss. Irish in front when we come back. The love that goes into a Subaru comes out when Subaru and our retailers share the love. 116,000 animals supported. 3,300 wishes granted. 4.3 million meals provided. And over 400 national parks protected. Be a part of something bigger. Get a new Subaru during the Share the Love event, and Subaru and our retailers will donate $300 to Boy's sons, but here tonight, in what you might call a homecoming game, Dan, he's trying to ruin, run the float competition shooting threes, I guess. <laughs> Weston, you said he's a graduate transfer. There you get a look at his career at Notre Dame and what he's done tonight. You said a graduate transfer. Now, the Citadel is a state military school, but grad transfers get this now they don't have to participate in any of the military stuff they go to class at night so they don't even participate with the cadets activity they live in off-campus apartments and that's in charleston south carolina that's a pretty good deal if you're trying to get a graduate degree and you can get a degree you know an mba there's a lot of graduate degrees the citadel unlike a place like vmi who just has undergraduates they have graduate programs here is uh, the drive and score, and Madison Durr has got six in this first half, and the Citadel back in front after Konezny missed the opportunity at the three-point trip a moment ago. Fifth time the lead has changed. Zona handling out on the perimeter. Konezny looked to Booth, now back to JR. Zona trying to set things here with four to shoot. Konezny thought about it, long two, and the rebound is pulled away, and that is Levi Burkholz who's come on the floor. He's a 6'3 freshman from Lake Mills, Wisconsin. And I think this is, uh, there's a three ball from Durr. He's now got nine in this first half. Ed Conroy knows he's got some Midwest guys on his roster. Here's a drive and score by Marcus Burton, who's now got seven in the first half. Conroy mentioned it to us in our visit today. He's put Burkholz on the floor because the young man is playing for the eighth time as a freshman, and he's from the state of Wisconsin. He's got people at the game tonight. That's a, it's a heck of a gesture by Ed Conroy, Dan. Well, that, I, I agree with you, Wes, but he's also trying to find somebody who can guard Konezny. And so yeah. Bur <laughs> Burkholz is going to get the opportunity to do it now. And Ed Conroy, he's got guys from Chicago, Davis. He's got Pegram, Marcus Pegram's also on this roster. He's got uh, mentioned Burkholz from Wisconsin. And I think we may have had another clock snap in the rest. Yep. So with 91 seconds left, they're going to go over and check on the clock. And we'll remind you that tomorrow night after the football signing day special, stay with ACC Network. Our women's basketball game of the week features Kiki Jefferson, number 19, Louisville, hosting Washington at the KFC Yum Center. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern right here on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. And Jeff Pond and Doug Schals are over. Ah, so, so it's not a clock issue. So we got the technology. It's got That's the it, but it is technology. Here. You're right, Wes. Yeah. The, the officials, they have a system that's battery powered where they're ba they have battery packs where when they blow the whistle, that stops the clock. And one of the battery packs failed. So it's a semi-clock issue. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So 89 seconds to go in this first half, two-point lead. Citadel and the basketball for Conroy's Bulldogs. Here is Burkholz. Durr kick out and a three ball by Davis. And the rebound pulled away by Tay Davis of Notre Dame. He tries to find a track. Kick for Konezny. Booth launches. And it bounds away to the Citadel. Boy, 
Bulldogs have played BC and NC State already out of the ACC and held tough on the drive. Morgan is fouled and Kinesny will go to the arc. The foul will be on Kinesny. It'll be his second. And it's the fifth by my count on the Irish here, Dan, with 42 seconds to go. And that, that was just a question of Morgan just forcing his way in. That wasn't bad defense. Mm -hmm. Citadel really trying hard to get the ball into the lane, and for the most part, Notre Dame's kept him out of there. Morgan knocks the free throw down. He's got double figures for the eighth time in the last nine games. And the Bulldogs, who are a 72% free throw shooting team, going to the line for the first time. Elijah Morgan had 17 in the loss to Boston College. He's had 16 in two other games through the first 11 for Citadel. And missed the second there. So he's got 10 here at the break. Melora Brown's got 11. Durr's got nine. The only other basket belongs to A.J. Smith, Dan. That's it. Three balls, Shrewsbury. And Morgan's got it with 26 seconds to go, and the shot clock is off at the end of this first half. So Bulldogs can play for the last shot of the frame. And the Bulldogs went to a zone defense on that last possession, Wes, and Notre Dame actually got a pretty good shot. Here is Durr, and lost the handle on it. Saves it. Davis a three. Long rebound, Zona, and there's the horn. But the Citadel shoots 48% from the floor. Hit five threes. And despite being out-rebounded 22 to 14, rides the hot hand of Quentin Melora Brown, Elijah Morgan, and Madison Durr who have accounted for 30 of their 32. Halftime coming up next. Full percentage, they rank 334th in the country in scoring. And so this is, at this point in time, this is not a very good offensive Notre Dame team, but they've been tremendous on defense. And Micah Shrewsbury's just hoping that they, they pass the ball a little better, they get better shots. Original starters out there for Notre Dame as they are for the Citadel, who leads by three. Inside, and this is Keva Jai with the right hand. And Davis was fouled on the play, I believe, by Winston Hill. Presbyterian transfer from outside Columbia, South Carolina, at Irmo. Third foul on Hill is the first on the Bulldogs. And and he'll get 17 seconds of action, and now he'll move out of the lineup. And Cam Roberts, a 6'6 freshman from South Boston, Virginia, returns after playing 10 minutes in the first half. Here's Brayton Shrewsbury, a wide open three. And that goes bounding away. And that's one thing his dad was talking to us about earlier today, the ability to hit the open shot, the catch and shoot, the 10 to 15 catch and shoot shots you're going to get in every ball game. And his club's not been able to cash in on many of those here tonight. Kicked out by Roberts and turned over. Here is Burton at full tilt. And the tap follow is good. Kinesny. Well, of course, 16 Kinesny. now for JR. That is offensive rebound number 11 in this game for Notre Dame. And we're going to get a whistle and foul off the ball on Marcus Burton. Ed Conroy, who's a good rebounding team, but Notre Dame's been the challenger tonight at that, at that particular distance. And a one-point lead for his team, but the foul on Burton gives the Citadel a new 20. Baseline jump shot, no good for Smith. Last touch by the Bulldogs. It's interesting, Wes. Each of these teams has a significant scorer who hasn't really done very much today. It's A.J. Smith for the Citadel, and it's Braden Shrewsbury for Notre Dame. So those, if either one of those two guys could get going, it would really help their team. Yeah, Shrewsbury averages eight. 
inside Konezny. Now back to Jai on the post. Over the wall. Brown and rolls in for Kevin Jai and the Irish in front. And again, that is not something that Notre Dame does a lot of. But Jai, he can be confident he's going to get a one-on-one -on -one because they're not coming to double-team him. Six lead change of our ball game. Melora Brown. Here's Burkholz who's back on the floor. Entry pass from Durr to Melora Brown. And now turned over by the Bulldogs. Shrewsbury ahead for Burton and the layup good. And a timeout coming for Ed Conroy. Notre Dame is doing it with defense. Couple of well, Notre Dame hit uh, their last three shots, and Dan, that helps amplify the good job they've done rebounding the night because they came in 10th in the ACC in rebound margin. But they've been every bit the equal of the second best rebounding margin team in the Southern Conference. That's the Citadel. And Ed Conroy said, look, we're big. We we should be a good rebounding team. And Notre Dame's challenged every one of them tonight. Boy, they sure have. And Ed Conroy told us this morning that he felt like the, uh, their size was going to be a, an important positive factor, but hadn't been so far. Out of the timeout, following the Irish run to put him up three. Elijah Morgan trying to find some help here. Davis kicks it away. Durr trying to fight through. Josh shut down the baseline nicely, and now four to shoot. And that's a fall away. They missed everything, and Durr got the rebound. A quick stick back rattles out. He had to gun it up because the shot clock was winding down, Dan be hard to find a better defensive possession than that. I mean, they were outstanding, were the Irish. They just kept them out of the lane. Burton looking for help inside, and he'll turn it over to Davis. There's just not a lot of room inside to pass the ball. Here's Melora Brown to work against Keva Jai, and he'll get the foul and shoot a pair of free throws. Second on Jai, the sophomore transfer from Penn State, who is from Centerville, Ohio. It's the first of the half on the iron. And I think Melora Brown needs to do more of that. He's much too willing to pass the ball in there. First, first free throw is good. A dozen now for Brown. Don't forget tomorrow's National Signing Day in college football. We got you covered on ACC Network and the ESPN app. The annual special breaking down all the football recruiting. Takes you through each school with highlights and evaluation. Starts at 3 Eastern and continues with ACC PM at 4. Right here on ACC Network. Streaming live on the ESPN app. 13 for Quentin Malora Brown. 23-year-old. Grad transfer from Vanderbilt, originally started his career at Rice. Here's Shrewsbury out front, long three. Konezny battle for the loose ball. Out of there come the Bulldogs and A.J. Smith trying to go to the rim. Follow wouldn't go and Davis a rip and run for the Irish and Burton trying to lead the way. And he was stepping out of bounds when the ball got knocked loose and he recovered. And that'll send it to the city. A lot of activity, very little result right at the moment. The Citadel has not made a field goal in the last five minutes and 30 seconds. And Notre Dame has missed their last six three-point attempts. And it leads you to a one-point difference. 340 into this second half. Laura Brown, little ball screen here for Kerr. Skip it over to the corner. A.J. Smith tried to get going and a whistling foul. It'll be on Tay Davis. It'll be his first. Second on that's, the Irish. That's still pretty good defense by Notre Dame. The Citadel's looking to get the ball inside, and when they do kick it out, the Irish are there on the catch foul that time, but that was still pretty good scrambling around on defense. Into the corner, here's Morgan. 
He'll get a screen for a three, and now Elijah Morgan knocks another one down. He's got four threes in the game for his 13 points. And after missing their last seven, the Citadel goes back in front, and Burton travels, trying to get to the basket. And that'll get us to a break on the Notre Dame turnover. Two-point lead for the Bulldogs. Transfer from Notre Dame, former walk-on for the Irish, one of three transfers in the lineup tonight for Ed Conroy. Winston Hill originally started at Francis Marion. He then went to Presbyterian, now on to Charleston. Quentin Melora Brown originally at Rice, and then Vanderbilt. He's a three-school guy, too, now, finishing up at the Citadel. And, uh, Hill hasn't scored, played a lot of minutes. Melora Brown and Morgan have been terrific for the Citadel, who's got a two-point lead as we rejoin you from South Bend. There's an offensive foul on Melora Brown for the screen. It'll be his first and two now on the Bulldogs in the second half. 3rd turnover against the Citadel here in the second half, Dan. Gives them seven in the ball game. It's sort of been a theme for each team, Wes. They seem to get rolling a little bit, then they turn it over. And here is a breakaway on a steal by Elijah Morgan. He's got 15 now in the ball game. At 17 at Boston College. And now he's pushed the Bulldogs advantage to four. Seven straight for the Military College of South Carolina. Burt, and move it around the top. Davis squares. Front rim miss, Konezny. And he's fouled on the play by Elijah Morgan. It's his first and the third on Citadel. And another offensive rebound. That, I think, you know, turnover's probably gonna be charged to Morgan, but Konezny just left the ball out there. to Burton. Burton will probably be charged with the turnover, but just put it right in Morgan's hands to Kinesky. Here's another one and a pull-up three in transition and a front rim miss for Elijah Morgan. Kevin Jai working. Foul line area. Burton against that zone look and a three by Kinesny. And the rebound pulled away and A.J. Smith trying to get transition chances here for the Citadel. Durr bounces out. This is Davis for three. Too long and too strong, and the rebound pulled away by Kerry Booth. Well, Davis has now missed five of those, Wes, but he is undeterred. Here's Burton to pull up. And Connecticut will get the Irish a second chance. Yep. Backing down, and can't finish. And Melora Brown, the rebound, and there's a foul from behind, I think, on Kevin Jai. That'll be his third, and that's the third on the Irish. And substitutions around the horn as Davis leaves the floor for the Irish, and Braden Shrewsbury has reported back. Kevin Jai has also checked out. Well, here's Burkholz back in the game, too. And yep. I think that's because they need somebody to block out Kinesny. Yep. Elijah Morgan's over on that bench now. This is Robert or Mark, Marcus Pegram has come on the floor wearing zero for the Bulldogs. Tough shot in traffic, and that's A.J. Smith. Largest lead of the night now for the Bulldogs on the second field goal of the night for the sophomore from Charlotte. And we've said a couple times, Smith is a big, strong guard. Those are the kind of shots he can make. Konezny has just tied his career high, Dan. He's got 18 tonight for Notre Dame. 18 no of 37. Who, no matter who Citadel has put in, they have had no answer for Konezny. He has used his quickness and his size to really good effect this evening. On the drive, Smith and a bucket. Four in a row for A.J. Smith. That's good news for the Bulldogs as their leading scorer is getting hot. Back to a six-point advantage. 
Arizona onto the floor. Here is Burton. And can't finish with the jump shot. Zona tried to rip it away from Durr. And here's Madison Durr trying to go rim to rim and will draw the Notre Dame foul. Sophomore from Atlanta trying to energize Conroy's team who's built a lead of six here, Dan. And well, they've done it on the back of A.J. Smith. Uh, this is a guy who can really get to the basket. He hurt the shoulder, or he's hurt his left shoulder early in the game. Don't know whether it has anything to do or not with his inability to be as effective offensively so far as he normally is, but he's made a couple of baskets recently, and that does seem to have energized the Citadel. So Burton committed his third foul. And you saw Smith knock down the free throw, his first of the night. He's the seventh best free throw shooter in the Southern Conference coming in. And another one for Durr. And it is a 13 to two run. And Madison Durr now with 11. Those are his first points in the second half. Citadel with a very small lineup back in the game has dropped back into his zone. Zona inside. Davis couldn't finish, draws the foul. Foul's going to be on Durr, I believe. And four now on the Citadel. Free throws when we come back to South Bend. The Bulldogs with their largest lead of the night. So with an eight-point lead on the Irish, this is their third game against the ACC this year. Losing early on opening night in Raleigh, 72-59 to NC State. And then a tight contest, Dan, a few days later at Chestnut Hill, 75-71 to uh, Boston College. And here tonight in South Bend, where they've got an eight-point lead, the free throw by Tay Davis bounds away, at least for his first attempts of the night. 69% free throw shooter of the year. And Ed Conroy playing around with his lineup here a little bit, trying to get Melora Brown some rest. So going with Hill in that five or center position and surrounding him with guards. That's the way, why they're playing Chestnut zone. Hill. I said Chestnut Hill, Dan, that BC game was actually at McAllister Fieldhouse in Charleston. So, well, wow. you ever been there? Yeah, heck of a building. Yeah, it is. It'd be a hard place for a visiting team to come in and play. Yep, sure would. Inside here is Durr. Eight-point game. Madison Durr trying to find some space. I think Davis got a piece of that and finally collects the miss. But Davis is 6'9". And Durr is only 6'4". It's hard to bat. It's hard to post him up. There's a foul on Shrewsbury off the ball. Or no, Tay Davis off the ball. His second. Four on the Irish. And you, you see Alex Wade now on the floor for Notre Dame, a sophomore who was awarded a scholarship in August. Had two points in the loss at Marquette. He's come on the floor now to see if he can provide a bit of a lift. Jump shot no good for the Bulldogs. Again, we mentioned Notre Dame with two of their regulars out, so they're a little bit thin. Yep. They need some help, and Wade has only played eight minutes all year prior to this game. Yep, just his fourth game of the year. Booth on the bounce pass. Here's Jai, step back. And... Miss pulled away on the backside. Smith. And Roberts trying to get things square. Pegram rather trying to get things square offensively. Pegram baseline back out front. Here is Morgan. Step back three off the window for Elijah Morgan. Wow. Wes, there's nothing you can Morgan. There's nothing you can do about that if you're Notre Dame. That was really good defense. They kept him out of the lane. And my heavens, you know, what you do is you force a tough contested three that he banks in. Wow. Here 
estaremos ahí por si le pasa algo a tu auto en este día especial. Mamá, para eso tengo State Farm. Es que es peligroso manejar en carretera. Si pasa algo, le mando un texto a mi agente. Tranquilos. State Farm estará ahí las 24 horas si los necesito. 24 horas. Ay. Ay. Amor, como un buen vecino, State Farm está ahí. Llama para obtener una cotización hoy. Well, Elijah Morgan's caught fire tonight. He continues to bomb away from distance. Five for seven from behind the line. Danny's got 18 points. And the Bulldogs have their largest lead of the night at 11 now. And again, that last sequence was not a bad defensive sequence by Notre Dame. I mean, that shot banked in. It was a contested three. Yeah, the problem the Irish have had tonight is here we're three quarters of the way through this game and they only have 37 points. Yep, the one of their last eight. It's a 16-2 run. Shrewsbury trying to break there, cannot. Rebound Malora Brown of the Citadel. West defense will keep you in the game, but if you're going to win eventually, you got to put the ball in the basket, and Notre Dame just hasn't been able to do that with any frequency at all tonight. They're only six points in the first ten and a half minutes of the second half. For these Irish, Melora Brown working on Zona. Davis on the drive, blocked by Zona. Out of there, Shrewsbury and Notre Dame in transition. And Burma oh had to finish the layup. Other way comes Smith, and A.J. Smith gets the and one. Boy, that is a big turnaround right there. Notre Dame misses one they should have had. And then Smith, we talked about his strength as a guard. He takes the contact and still is able to muscle his way in. You miss a layup on one end, you give up a layup on the other. That can be a backbreaker. Fifth foul on Notre Dame. And here is, or no, eight foul on Notre Dame, I should say. And here is Smith to add the and one. My goodness, seven and a half. Nine in the ball game for A.J. Smith. Their leading score at 16 and a half a game. Four fouls on Marcus Burton. And the lead has increased for the Citadel. 19 to two run for Conroy's team. Here's Burton. Three ball from the perimeter by Tony Sanders Jr. Pounds away. Sanders Jr. playing for just the third time this year. In his 29th career game tonight, Dan. I'm not sure Notre Dame recognized the fact that the Citadel dropped back into a zone again. Got to be careful. Sometimes that zone, and they look like open shots, but they're just a couple of steps further than you want to be. Three ball from out on the left, too strong. Rebound for Shrewsbury. He's got Booth, Konezny, Burton playing with four. Now Braden all the way to the basket will draw the foul. Foul is on Quentin Melora Brown. And That's a good job second. by Shrewsbury to drive the ball to the basket, Wes. He is 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 5 from 3. So it's a good idea to try to get to the line. Here is Braden at the line. First point is good. Quick reminder to you, ACCPM, a staple program with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannenbaum. Comes up at 4 o'clock Eastern. They'll continue talking college football, the latest from around the conference. Terrific guests and conversation right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Two free throws for Shrewsbury. Those are his first points of the night. And that equals 39. That equals his free throw total for the entire season, Wes. Shrewsbury's a guy who likes to stand outside and snipe, so he doesn't get to the line much. Down low, power move inside. It was Hill that couldn't finish the last touch by the Bulldogs. Hill has yet to score tonight, Wes. Yep. Came into the ball game, by my notes here, six points, four rebounds in their last two games. That was his average in just six of his last 
15 from the floor. He's only taken three shots tonight. Shrewsbury a deep three. And looked like Booth couldn't quite flag it down. And on the drive, a euro and a bucket for A.J. Smith. Boy, that was some rebound, and then he just took off, and nobody stopped him. Yep. Coast-to-coast -coast move for Smith. 11 now in the ball game, 9 in this second half, and here are the Bulldogs again in transition. And this is the layup for Madison Durham. And a timeout for Notre Dame. 16 point advantage for the Citadel. And the Bulldogs get it in overdrive. First, a terrific move by Smith. And then a moment ago, here is Madison Durr at the rim. Well, Ed Conroy knows what it's like to coach in this league and assistant with Les Robinson at NC State. And those teams in the 90s, he's got terrific performance tonight. Madison Durr is a terrific sophomore guard. Elijah Morgan, quote-unquote, homecoming game, Dan, after oh. being a Notre Dame walk-on, has got 18. That's a career high for him. 13 for Durr. Melora Brown's been terrific. 11 for A.J. Smith. He's been electric here in the second half. And well, Smith you don't need a lot of guys out. to score. If four guys score enough. Yeah. Those four guys right there got more than Notre Dame has. Meanwhile, Micah Shrewsbury has gone and gotten Raheem Brayton a uh, walk on, and there is Kerry Booth with a nice turn and score at the high post. So that's just the second field goal in the last 10 and a half minutes for Notre Dame, and Alex Wade's on the floor. That's one of the, uh, he's not technically one of the five walk ons because he was awarded a scholarship last August the young sophomore from San Diego. But he's on the floor with Konezny, Brayton, Booth, and Marcus Burton. And down 14 now with seven minutes to go, Dano. Well, I think Micah Shrewsbury's just looking for some kind of a spark. He said, we're building this thing through defense. And they may need some of that and maybe a couple more scoops along the way. And we get a travel there or not? A travel on Notre Dame or a travel on the Citadel bringing the ball front court. Turned over by Elijah Morgan. The Notre Dame pressure having an effect now. Now let's see if they can convert on this end. Booth for Burton launching away. Back rim miss. Konezny trying to reach in and tie up Melora Brown. Instead, it's pulled away. Notre Dame's missed their last 12 shots from behind the line. And that's a situation, I'm not sure that that's a good shot that time by Burton. He is not a good three-point shooter. And they, they had something going. They needed to take the ball to the basket. Irish are just three of their last 17 from three. Three of 17 tonight in the ball game. There's Melora Brown, the right-hand move is good. First field goal for Quentin Melora Brown in the second half. He's got 15, the lead is 16 now for the Bulldogs as we approach six minutes to play. And one and done is Notre Dame. And that's turned over by Citadel. Here's Burton and one with the score. Morgan gonna be called for the block. And Marcus Burton's first highlight of the night, Dan. Marcus Burton, that's pretty impressive, but Kinesny knocks the ball away, and then Burton picks it up, and he's just flying to the basket. And he makes a really nice move just at the last minute because Morgan was trying to get position established, but what quickness with the ball in transition did Marcus Burton just show us? 14-point lead for the Citadel. You see they got 20 points off the Notre Dame turnovers and the Irish missed the free throw. There's six of 11 tonight at the line after the miss there. But here's that pressure again, right at the timeline, cross the pass for Smith. See Hill is back out there. 
Inside, and Smith had it ripped away, but Wade stepped out of bounds. Good hustle play by Alex Wade. The Irish are flying around the court at the moment, and if you're the Citadel, this is hard to play against guys who are really, really this aggressive. Yep. And what do we have now? Foul off the ball. It's on Raheem Great. Senior from South Bend, his first. It's nine on Notre Dame. So one and one for break, or beg your pardon, for Hill after the Brayton foul. Winston Hill's just 10 of 19 at the line this year. First trip tonight, looking for his first point. And the free throw good. Don't forget Friday night doubleheader. Starts at six o'clock Eastern, P.J. Hall and Clemson. Welcome Queens to the Little John Coliseum and then Notre Dame hosts the Red Foxes of Marist at eight o'clock. Friday night doubleheader of men's hoops on ACC Network streaming live on the ESPN app. Hill got one of the two, 15 point lead, Konezny, who's tied his career high of 18 tonight. He had 18 early in the year against Auburn. On the drive, Burton skips for Konezny, three ball away. And Zona had a shot at the rebound and got saved by the Citadel, but right back to Matt Zona. Here's Burton for three. Back rim miss. And a hustle play with Wade, and he's going to be called for the foul, reaching in on Madison Dirt. Foul on Wade be his first and that's the tenth. Oh no they just not called out of bounds. Now he caught they said Wade knocked the ball away. Knocked the ball out of bounds. Well thanks Dan. It's really but tough it to maintain with. such intense energy on the defensive end for very long unless you have some success on the other end. There's Kinesny's third. So that's 10 now on Notre Dame with five minutes even to go. So two shots the rest of the way for Citadel team. That is 72.2 on the year, but tonight is just seven of nine. That's a pretty good percentage. Not many attempts, but that is likely to change the way Notre Dame is trying to pace this. Down 15, and the free throw for Durr is good. See that Terry Booth spells Alex Wade for the Irish. Notre Dame playing without Julian Roper and Logan Imes tonight. Second free throw good. Six and a half, 15 in the ball game now for Durham, who's also got five rebounds to his credit. Lead is 17 for the Citadel. Three ball by Konezny, no good. Wes, and the Citadel has stayed in this zone for most of the second half, and the result has been that Notre Dame's ability to penetrate and get inside has been greatly reduced. They have settled for the three. Yep. And a foul on the in line. And there's Logan Ives and Julian Roper both on the on the bench tonight. And we'll have one and one on the eighth foul against the Citadel. Wes, we're talking about that zone enticing Notre Dame to shoot threes. And the Irish have missed their last 15 three-point attempts. Yeah. So the foul was on A.J. Smith. You see Matt Zona looks like he needs a corner man. <laughs> and here is Marcus Burton at the line. Free throw good on the one and one for Burton. Looks like Nixon Dorvillian, the Notre Dame basketball trainer, has gotten him all patched up at least with a piece of gauze. and. Zona right back up there and ready to go when coach needs him. 
second of the free throws for Burton, who's now two of three at the line. 13 in the ball game for the freshman. The lead is 15 with four and change to go, and get a foul in front of the Citadel bench, I believe, on Wade. That will be the sophomore from San Diego's first. A year ago, Wade played in five games, just two in the a against the ACC. And you see Elijah Morgan, who's getting ready to go to the free throw line. It, Elijah Morgan tonight, Ed Conroy was telling us today, his sons played AAU ball with Elijah Morgan in New Orleans when Conroy was head coach at Tulane. And he got on the phone with Mike Bray and told Mike Bray about this guy who was going to come to school at Notre Dame. And Morgan ended up being a walk-on for Bray's team. And here, Elijah Morgan, who finished his, obviously, his work, he graduated, what did he tell us, three years, three and a half years? Three years. years from graduated Dame, right? from Notre Dame in three years, yes. Yep. And so Morgan was looking for a place, and the tie with Ed Conroy, who was returning to the Citadel to be their head coach, and the grad school, Dan, you were talking about earlier, perfect fit for Elijah Morgan, and look what he's doing tonight. Here's Burton on the drive. He got caught in traffic. Back for break. And out front again, here's Burton now. 10 to shoot. Out of the corner, Zona. Three spins out. Brayton wants a chance. Can't fill it up. And that's Raheem Brayton is only his second field goal attempt of the year. And we're going to get a turnover by Durr and the Bulldogs. Notre Dame's going to have the ball, but down 16. Under four to go at South Bend. Well, Ed Conroy is not only the coach at the Citadel, he's also coaching cadets, Dan, and being the father of a uh, young man that went to the Naval Academy, you know the uh, rigorous schedule, and this is the Military College of South Carolina, and it's up at 5.30, and it's on, right? Well, it is, Wes, except if you're one of those grad transfers, you don't have to do this. You go to That's... class at night, you live off campus, <laughs> you have a nice apartment, you're in Charleston, South Carolina, and you're getting a pretty good graduate degree. That's a heck of a deal to me. Yeah. Of course, I couldn't guys... live in I couldn't live in Charleston. I'd weigh six thousand pounds in a week. <laughs> Keenan Davis and some of these guys look at Boothco baseline. He'll draw the foul. Yeah, I would say though that AJ Smith, he's a guy that's in the cadet curriculum at the Citadel. You've got Madison Durr, Keenan Davis. Marcus Pegram, you know, you got plenty of guys who are all buying for time. Wes, out, outside of those graduate transfers, everybody on the Citadel roster is a freshman or sophomore. Yep. So they're all in, involved in that very rigorous military style schedule. Now, I think you have 5 30 in the morning for physical training. Yeah, good luck with that. Mm hmm. Terry Booth missed the first, missed the second. 16-point game. And a backcourt turnover again. Here's kick out Burton. Kinesny's three rattled out. Boy, the Irish are three of 22 from three tonight. They've missed 16 in a row. Wow. So here is Durr. And now the Citadel, under three to go, going to burn some clock. Here's Smith skipping in. Nice cross-court pass, and A.J. Smith had a terrific second half, Dan, for Coach Conroy. It's very interesting. He only scored a point in the first half, but he's the leading scorer, and he just kept plugging away, and he has really produced here in the second. Booth launches. Back rim miss, and Melora Brown the rebound. Another three goes bounding away. Now that was not a good one, Wes. That was a long one. It was a contested one. They've missed some open ones, but that wasn't a good shot. 63-45. 
And Winston Hill as we approach two minutes. Shot clock down to five. Smith launches. Hill the rebound on the backside, scores on the stick back. First field goal for Winston Hill. The lead is 20, largest of the night for the Bulldogs. And an offensive foul called on Notre Dame. The Citadel Bulldogs have done this recently. They beat Pittsburgh a little more than a year ago to open the season. That was their last win against an ACC school, Dan. But according to our friends at ESPN Stats and Info tonight, this is only going to be their second win against the ACC in their last 44 games. And that dates back some 40 years <laughs> for the Citadel. So what you're trying to tell me is our friends at the stats outfit are saying this is an uncommon occurrence that we're it's witnessing. It's a rare, tonight. be rare, okay. would be the term maybe. Uncommon or rare, take your pick. Melora Brown the rebound. And a foul will be called on Notre Dame. And you see Elijah Morgan. Looks like he might be cramping up here on the baseline. And his teammates trying to help him stretch out here and at least get to his feet. Ten rebounds tonight for Quentin Melora Brown. My goodness, he came in with four straight double-figure games, averaging 14 points, 11 rebounds, and 61% from the floor. He's six of seven. And misses the free throw. 15 and 10 tonight for the young man from Lorton, Virginia. Playing at his third school, started at Rice, then at Vanderbilt for three, and now the grad year at the Citadel, which is technically the COVID year. And the rebound by Thomas Crow out of Macedonia, Ohio, gets some cheers from the crowd here at the Purcell Pavilion. Crow is a walk-on, playing for just the second time. He's on the floor with Sanders. JT Kelly is out there. Here is Wade at the foul line. And it'll go bounding away, and Melora Brown had the rebound. Sanders tried to strip it. He saved it to Madison Durr, who comes front court in the final minute. And we get a timeout taken, and Ed Conroy is going to empty his bench. And they're going to bring in Quinn Nielsen. You see him at 30, wearing number 32. Tony Carpio is playing tonight. He's a sophomore from uh, Sewanee, Georgia, playing for the seventh time. This is Marcus Pegram, the freshman from Chicago, who's Going to get to go home for the holidays after tonight. That's a jump shot by Burkholz. It's no good. So a nice gesture by Ed Conroy to get his players in the final minute here. And Micah Shrewsbury is going to empty his bench tonight and hope that he's able to get Julian Roper and maybe Logan Imes back on the floor for Friday night's game against Marist. Three ball from... J.T. Kelly, a sophomore out of Ponte Vedra Beach, bounds away. J.T. Kelly may be one of my favorite stories I want to investigate, Dan, as this season moves on. The young man at the end of the bench is a first-year walk-on who in high school had an NBA jersey business that he made $70,000 off of. I got I to gotta work on that one. Good thing we're going to South Bend during the ACC travels to find out more about J.T. Kelly's business. But tonight is about Ed Conroy and the Citadel Bulldogs.